Hi there, I'm Claudia Lash, and I like to um, use fancy stitches when I do some of my applique. I call these um, this type of work embellished applique, and I do teach classes and all of that about it. Today I was working on some blocks that I'm working up into a going to be a new bunch of little quilts. And I noticed some things and I thought, hmm, maybe I will uh, just bring these up as little tips if you're doing embellished applique, because I already have some videos on this, um, on this uh, type of sewing. What I have done is I have made 16 blocks of uh, fusible applique and everything is has been stitched down and when I stitched it down I used my fancy stitches on my sewing machine. So each block is a little different. I did put a um, stabilizer on the back. I'd like to use Ricky Tim's stable stuff. So there, here are some of the blocks that I have done. I've put them into groups of four because I I'm not sure, but I may use them in use four blocks to make one wall quilt, four to make another. I don't know, that's too far down the road for me now. But these, these all have their fancy stitches. When I'm doing fancy stitches, here are my practice pieces because you always need to have practice places to try out the stitch write down the number um, and if it's a default or if you've maneuvered that stitch a little bit to make it work better. So these are here to do these stitches. So today I wanted to, I'm definitely going to do four of these like this. This is an older pattern of mine. It's called the Butterfly Collection. And the Butterfly Collection is, a, I think it's four different types of quilts. This is one that's a wall quilt. And then there are two other wall quilts and a set of four um, placemats. So I am going to do this same kind of thing with these blocks. I think it will be interesting um, to do the same thing just using this instead of a butterfly. While I was um, sewing them, and when you make these, then you have to, you have to add a side, um, sides, like a, like a border around each one, which I did. I also put some batting on the back. Oh, and I did take out some of the outside of the stabilizer underneath these. So I, I had already taken out the outside stabilizer. Right? You, you can just tear it away. You can leave it in, but I thought, oh, I don't, I don't need it there. And then I, today was stitching on them. And I thought um, I would tell you how I decided to stitch them. Each time I do something like this, I change my mind a little bit. But I first of all stitched a, like just in the ditch right along the outside there. And then I thought, well, I'll just stitch around here with my feed dogs down and just nicely stitch around. Or did, I may not have done that here. Let's see, I did another one where, well, I don't know. I think, I think I did try to do that around here. And I thought, well, maybe it would be better if I used my walking foot and tried to do the same thing. And maybe I stopped in the middle. Maybe that was it. I, I don't remember exactly now what I did. But I stopped part way because it was too hard. I couldn't see with my big old walking foot there. And so then I put on my... Um, put my feed dogs down and just used my um, machine open 
my open toe machine quilting uh, foot. So I can do free motion. And that worked okay there, and I could do that. When I got to the center, um, I, I should have probably left it as I did at first. I thought, oh, I'll just go around here and make a few big circles. And I did, I made about five or six big circles. You can see it right here, and then a big one. And I, I was done with it then, so I stuck it up and I kept thinking, oh, I really don't like that. I really don't like that, but I don't know what to do with it. So I just left it for a minute. One of the things that I always find is that if you leave something alone for a little bit, if something isn't suiting you, leave it alone for a bit. Go do something else, go work on another block, come back to it. So anyway, um, I did this block in a different way. This one, I could use my walking foot, I think, and just go right around there. And it was all right, and I could, I could do this. Now doing this, I had to put the feed dogs down and do free motion. However, after I had done this, I think I, I picked up another um, block. And I think, oh, I think I was getting ready to do this one. And I, I did this one. I, I was getting ready to do this handy dandy little decorative stitch in the middle. I thought, oh, would that be fun? And that's more exciting than just doing some, some plain stitching. So I practiced over, I think on, well, maybe I didn't practice yet. I know I um, threaded my needle. I was all ready to go. And I was on this beginning to practice and forgot that I had my uh, single hole throat plate on. And so the needle went crash and broke. I do that very, very often. You always need to watch when you're switching back and forth from your uh, free motion with a single hole throat play. Um, always check that out. But luckily, it just broke the needle. I put another needle in and it went. But I thought this was a great idea and I hadn't really thought of that before. And that is, you, there's a decorative stitch that has these little circles in the, in the together. And I thought if I can use my foot, um, my open toe foot, which, let me show you this one. On, on this machine, it's a 20D, but it's got a big open, open toe thing on it. And you can just, well, I practiced on my practice piece, wherever it got to. I practiced, oh, right here. I practiced on here and thought, I think I can go do that in a circle and it'll be okay. And it was, and I like it. There are some places when you're quilting that you can use your fancy stitches. This is, I don't know the number on this one. This is 607. So you can use your fancy stitches when you're doing um, your quilting. If you have the space and, and you do have to practice a little bit and you will, also, you will still have the problem of hooking up together when you, where you start, when you get back. And I figure nobody's gonna see this really close, but I did have that, that problem I started here and when I got back, I have two, two big circles right close to one another. But nobody's gonna see that. And if they do see it, too bad. They're not, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, but I was so excited, I thought, oh, that's a great thing to remember when you're doing um, this kind of work and, and you can motor around on something small. Now, if I were doing a great big quilt, it would be difficult to try to use the fancy stitches in a small area when when you've got to stop and move and stop and move and 
it doesn't work very well. But if you have little bits that you're motoring under your machine or under your needle, it works great. So that's all. I mean, I, I just had a, a great, oh, and another thing I want to just point out when um, I do my machine quilting, look at these green things. They certainly aren't perfect. I have to do those with um, just free motion. And I think, oh gosh, I'm not that great, but I don't guess it matters every time you you do something, you make something, you're getting a little tiny bit better. And I know when I look at the work I've done on these and I look at some of the free motion on this um, butterfly thing, I think I can tell that there, it's a little bit better. So don't work yourself up too much and, and think that it needs to be perfect. It doesn't, it just needs to uh, be somewhat decorative and, and something that you think is fun to do. So I think that's it for, for this uh, embellished applique stitching. And when I get to anything else that I think might be new and different, I will stick it on here. So enjoy your um, machine and, and all the things that it can do.